I think the, the, there's a, probably a greater likelihood the House flips than the Senate. Senate races are just different. They're statewide. Uh, candidate quality has a lot to do with the outcome. Well, you know it's bad when even Mitch McConnell says you might lose. Now, in what was once supposed to be a favorable year for Republicans, the Cook Political Report has now declared control of the Senate to be a toss-up and moved the Pennsylvania Senate race between Democrat John Fetterman and Republican Mehmet Oz to, quote, lean Democratic. All of this comes as Fetterman has been absolutely dominating Dr. Oz on social media for being a carpetbagger who still lives in New Jersey, for owning 10 homes, and most recently over a video Oz posted of a shopping trip where he not only got the name of the supermarket wrong, but said he was shopping for a coup d'etat. Here is how Fetterman responded. And if this looks anything other than a veggie tray to you, then I am not your candidate. And he's not only struggling, he's not the only struggling Republican candidate out there. There's also J.D. Vance, whose Ohio Senate campaign Republicans were already worried about before he had comments go viral that appeared to show him saying that people in abusive relationships should stay together for the sake of their family. He says those comments were taken out of context. There's also the Georgia Senate candidate, Herschel Walker, who's made a series of gaffes, far too many to get into here, and many, many confusing remarks. And in a recent campaign ad, his ex-wife, says he held a gun to her head and threatened to kill her. Important to note in that ad, she said, the first time he held a gun to my head, indicating that perhaps there were more times. Joining me now is Fernand Amandi. He's a pollster and MSNBC political analyst. Uh, Fernand, my friend, this is quite an uh, interesting slate of candidates the Republicans have put out. And I'm just curious to hear from you how much of a boost this is for Democrats. Because if Pennsylvania, in fact, does go blue, it would mean that Dems have a little less pressure defending some of their other states like Georgia, Nevada, or Arizona. Speaking of, how is Herschel Walker polling so closely um, to Warnock? But we'll start with the first one. What do you say? Well... Tiffany, all you got to do is listen to what Mitch McConnell said here at the top of the segment in that clip you played. That's a little MAGA GOP CYA. I didn't do mm -hmm. it. I didn't recruit these uh, bad candidates. And what it means is he's acknowledging what a lot of us are seeing in the polling and what now the money is saying to Tiffany, that the Republican chances of controlling and taking back the Senate look very, very difficult now. And I think, again, if you follow that money, for me, the biggest indicator of the week is when the RNC, or the RSCC, the Senate committee that the Republicans have controlling these Senate races, they all of a sudden pulled tens of millions of dollars in buy scheduled. And, Tiffany, I think it is a direct reaction to the fact that some of these dud extremist candidates just aren't closing the sale, and it's what has them all panicked right now. Well, here's the things that are concerning me, Fernand, because I hear what you're saying, and I think it's, you know, a sign that says something that Mitch McConnell is concerned. Um, however, I do think about the rampant voter suppression happening across the country. I think about partisan poll watchers. I think about these folks who are running how elections um, are, are happening, uh, who perhaps have been emboldened since January 6th. And I wonder um, if this is not a fair playing field. Uh, you know, could voters so overwhelmingly be frightened at what they're seeing at the Republican Party that, once again, they will leapfrog over these kind of tactics to suppress the will of the people? Well, but there has to be a way to get that done, Tiffany, because fundamentally right now, what is on the ballot this November? Let's not make any mistake about it. And I think the Liz Cheney results from this week made it crystal clear. The choice is not between Democrat and Republican. It's between democracy and fascism. But you're right. The Republican playbook is to rig the system and make voting the most difficult thing possible. So you're asking a lot of these Democratic candidates to win in states with one hand tied behind their back, a little pepper spray thrown in their faces when you take into consideration all of these efforts that the Republicans are doing in these states to make voting more difficult and to target certain voters. We certainly see it everywhere, but it's especially happening here, even in my home state of Florida, which is where in an otherwise environment where things are looking really difficult now, for the Republicans and have been in these last two weeks, uh, it's still something you have to contend with. And you're right. Uh, you cannot take them for granted because what they're doing is trying to monkey it up.
Yeah, and you talked about targeting certain voters. Certainly, you know, I've talked plenty about uh, targeting black voters. We saw that in 2016. Um, but especially targeting uh, Latino voters. Uh, you know, when I did my um, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month special down uh, in Miami with you uh, a few months ago, back in October, um, we talked a lot about that. And they said that's such a huge problem. They will do Spanish language ads with disinformation and misinformation. Uh, and we're seeing, um, since the abortion uh, Roe v. Wade overturn, we're seeing a bit of a shift among Latino voters who are shifting away from the Republican Party uh, for that ruling. I don't know, Fernand, I want to hear from you because I'd argue some of that is geographic. The Latino community is a big umbrella. You know, there is no Latino vote. There are Latino voters. That is exactly right. And it's all a function of where they are also geographically, Tiffany. But again, the big earthquake that has changed the dynamic of this entire race, sure, the Inflation Reduction Act is going to help. Biden's had a really couple of strong weeks and he's turned his fortunes around his approval rating is inching up. But what is propelling this and what has upended the dynamic is absolutely the Supreme Court's ruling ending reproductive freedom when it comes to the Roe versus Wade decision. And Hispanic voters are saying to the Republican Party in the polling that we're seeing and others are conducting that they went too far, that they overreached. And even despite the fact that many Hispanic voters, yes, personally, Tiffany, when it comes to their personal perspective, may have a more pro-life perspective, that does not mean that they want to see the government making these decisions for other women and other families. And that is why you've seen that Hispanic vote for the Democrats at the national level stabilize and, if anything, increase back to 2018 levels, which is where that blue wave propelled Democrats to capture the Congress and have a counterpunch to the Trump administration in the White House. And that's the conditions we're starting to see now as we go into these final two months. Yeah, you know, I think you made some really good points there, Fanon. And we, again, you and I have talked about this plenty. Races are often won on the margins, and there are still pockets of communities who have no outreach from campaigns, like the AAPI community, um, Latino voters, certainly, um, and, and, and the, even the indigenous community. I mean, you see that in places like, you know, in Alaska with the Alaskan Natives, um, and even in some of the states here where there are large uh, Native American populations. So I hope people are paying attention to the rising majority of America, my friend. Um, Fernan, I think I'm going to see you on Saturday. Saturday on the cross connection. Is that right? I, I, listen, if you don't see me there, I'll be watching. But yeah, the plan is <laughs> to do it on Saturday. My favorite weekend show, by the way, the cross connection, or at least one of them. That's, uh, that's one of my Thank you, Fernand. Thank you. Well, I'll see you Saturday morning on the cross connection. And thank you for All being right. with me uh, tonight as I fill in for Miss Joy Reid.